Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Farzan is the newest member of the Element Exclusive Support Club, debuting as the dedicated support for Animo. She comes with a kit that debuffs enemies' Animo resistance and buffs Animo damage, making her a premium support for boosting the damage of current and possibly future Animo units. While she is a niche but valuable Animo support, there are also some very important caveats that you ought to be aware of. So in this video, I'll share some insights regarding my overall experience with her so far and cover all the information you need to make her flex her boomer muscles as best as possible. Like many boomers though, Farazan may need help navigating the modern times. So for a smoother internet browsing experience, I'd recommend her today's sponsor, Opera GX. Opera GX is my go-to browser and you may have heard me mention it before. This time, let's talk about GX profiles. GX profiles allow you custom browser experiences depending on your needs. GX has a pre-built streaming profile for me to use, or maybe I want to minimize my browser's power power usage, so I use the pre-build potato profile, which turns GX into its most basic form, and it appears in my taskbar as something I can regularly open up. This is super convenient if your browser needs vary based on whatever the heck you're doing that day. Some other cool stuff about Opera GX? Easily customize or get HD wallpapers that will run smoothly in the background. Regularly browse the GX corner to check out new games or game news. And in case you're browsing late at night, use the force dark pages function to avoid getting blocked blinded. It'll turn any, and I mean any, page into dark mode. If you want the convenience of Opera GX but on your phone, download GX Mobile. You can get GX Mobile and Opera GX through my personal link in the description and in the pinned comment. Now back to the video. What do you think? Got any interest in becoming my student? We'll start with her talents and gameplay mechanics and discuss what makes her a good niche support as well as some issues you'll need to work around. Farazan's normal and charged attacks generally won't be used except for her charged shot in relation to her skill. Farazan's skill lets her enter the Manifest Gale state that decreases the charging time of her next charged shot and turns it into a Hurricane Arrow. You can see that she has a Hurricane Arrow available by this little glowing triangle. Her skill only has a 6 second cooldown, but the Hurricane Arrow buff will stay available for 18 seconds even if you switch out. This means you have some flexibility on when to fire the Hurricane Arrow. You could also precast it at the start of a battle to shoot it later on when needed. However, there are very few reasons to delay firing the arrow, and so you'll very often just end up using the skill and arrow consecutively before she switches out. When fired, it creates the pressurized collapse effect. This deals animo damage and pulls in nearby objects and opponents. Its suction effect is relatively mild though. Light enemies can get briefly sucked into the vortex, but resistant enemies can brush it off. Pressurized collapse damage is also considered skill damage, so it can proc certain effects that require skill damage or hits. Through her A1 passive, a pressurized collapse also applies a 30% animal resistance debuff to enemies hit, which lasts for 4 seconds. At C0 to C3, this is also the only innate method for Farazan to generate energy. When the pressurized collapse from her charged shot hits an opponent, it generates two animal particles. Again, her skill cast does not generate energy, you have to hit an enemy with a charged shot's pressurized collapse. Moving on, she has her burst, which contains the bulk of her support utility. Casting it deals animo damage, then releases a polyhedron that moves along a triangular path and emits a pulse every time it reaches the corners. It moves and pulses every 2 seconds, and lasts for 12 seconds before C2. Take note that the pulses don't deal damage. The only time her burst deals damage is on the initial hit upon casting it. If the pulse's AoE hits an enemy, it applies a 30% animal resistance shred to them. Sources of animal resistance reduction are particularly rare. As of now, there are only a handful of ways to do so, most of which are locked behind 5-star constellations. Plus, your party gets an animal damage bonus based on the burst's talent level. These effects last for 4 seconds, so it eventually needs to be refreshed over time. Your character doesn't have to follow the pulses to maintain the animal damage bonus buff since you can still get the effect from a wide range around the polyhedron. However, it's not the same for enemies since they need to be be in the pulse's AoE. Unfortunately, this can be a problem if your enemy leaves its area too soon as they might not get affected by the pulse anymore, which means dealing less damage. Teammates that have better crowd controlling utilities, like Animo or Freeze units, might be able to help with that. Her constellations can also help as discussed later. 
In relation to her burst, her A4 passive gives an additional buff. If the character is affected by her burst, their animal damage hit gets a flat base damage increase based on 32% of Farazan's base attack. To recap, base attack is only the character's inherent attack stat plus their weapon's base attack. Attack buffs or artifact stats do not count. There are several noteworthy points about this buff. If you're simultaneously hitting multiple opponents with one hit, like in this example with Sucrose's skill, only one of the hits will get the damage increase while the other damage instances do not. Plus, it has a cooldown of 0.8 seconds. So if you're using fast attacking units like Hazo or Wanderer, not every hit gets the damage increase. More so, this might make some players overinflate or focus too much on higher base attack weapons. Let's use the Favonius Warbo vs Fading Twilight as an example. At level 80, her innate base attack is 174. If both weapons are maxed, that results in 628 vs 739 base attack. 32% of those result in a 201 vs 236 base damage increase respectively. It is bigger, but when it's all calculated down the line, the difference is very negligible. To practically demonstrate, here's a quick comparison between Farazan equipped with a level 80 Fav Bow with a very low base attack versus a level 90 Skyward Harp, the highest base attack bow. As you can see, the damage difference on Hazo's skill is really small. Basically, a higher base attack weapon on Farazan is something. Just don't overestimate the difference. All in all, those are the essentials of Farazan's base kit at C0. Her gameplay and rotation simply boils down to casting her skill, then firing the hurricane arrow to pull in and debuff enemies, then casting her burst to set up its effects, then switching out. For her talent priority, I recommend pouring your materials into her burst first as that will increase the animal damage bonus she provides. Then you can level up her skill to improve the cast and vortex damage, and her auto attack talents can be left alone. One huge problem though is her energy needs to burst, which is essential to provide almost all her support functions. At C0, Farazan innately has poor energy generation which doesn't help her high 80 burst cost. The only way to generate particles is through her hurricane arrow which can feel clunky or inconvenient to execute. Much of her energy needs are addressed by mainly stacking a lot of ER on her, having additional animal members to generate particles, and having equipment that provide more energy. One major solution is by making adjustments in her rotation. Farazan can instead opt to just burst every other rotation, which allows you to accommodate shorter rotations of around 15 seconds if the cooldowns of her teammates allow. Doing so lowers Farazan's ER requirement significantly, such that she can get by with just a Favonius bow and ER sands. Even on 20 second rotations, if Farazan is severely lacking in energy, you may be better off just continuing onto the next rotation without her burst instead of extending the rotation to generate energy for her. And if you do choose to only use her burst every other rotation, in the case of Wanderer, you can synchronize it so that you use both their bursts in the same rotation. However, many of these issues get addressed with constellations, especially her C6, so let's discuss those next. C1 allows Farazan to fire an extra hurricane arrow per skill cast. While this can be used to pull in enemies and apply the debuff via pressurized collapse, it has about a 5 second cooldown in order to generate new particles, which is unfortunately a long time. If you use them one after another too quickly, no particles are generated from the second arrow's pressurized collapse. By itself, C1 isn't helpful in addressing her energy needs, and the time it takes to fire two arrows consecutively can inefficiently extend the rotation with no energy benefits. C2 extends Farazan's burst duration by 6 seconds, resulting in 18 seconds, which also means you can apply her related buff and debuffs for longer. This is a really good constellation that makes setting her buff up times more forgiving and flexible. In the case of supporting Xiao, who has a very long field time, this constellation becomes even more valuable. C3 increases her skill by 3 levels. C4 adds an energy restoration mechanic into her pressurized collapse. It restores more energy the more opponents it hits, to a maximum of 4 energy per collapse. This constellation aims to help with her energy problems, but it still deals with the issue of her clunky charge shot mechanics until you get C6. C5 increases her burst by 3 levels, and finally, her C6 does a lot to fix her previously mentioned issues. 
First, it gives a 40% crit damage increase to animal damage, similar to Sara's and Goro's C6. Obviously, it makes her an even more valuable animal support. The second effect is an incredibly huge quality of life improvement. C6 now allows the active character to apply a pressurized collapse every 3 seconds when damaging an enemy, as long as they're affected by Farazan's buffs. So you no longer have to rely on her hurricane arrow to create those collapses or generate particles. This leads to new synergies. One, it gives her improved crowd controlling mechanics since these pressurized collapses can now trigger multiple times over your rotation to suck enemies in. Two, it complements her C4 which means that she can also continuously restore her own energy over time on top of also generating animal particles. 3. Since the pressurized collapse is considered as skill damage, this now makes it viable to build her on a tenacity set, which requires skill damage to proc. And since pressurized collapses apply the animo debuff, it's less of a problem if enemies leave the polyhedron's AoE. As you can see, there's a lot of utility locked by her C6 that makes her just so much easier to use. It's a clear tactic designed to incentivize or pressure players to get it. If you're lucky enough or have the primos or cash to burn on her banner anyway, then that's great. But if you aren't in those categories, my personal advice is to not force it too much and don't be tempted to spend for the sake of pulling high constellations. Trying to snipe 4 star constellations can be very dangerous after all. Farazan is like Goro for Ito in that getting C6 is definitely a big plus, but that doesn't mean she's useless without it and at low constellations is still valuable as an animo support. Now let's go through her builds starting with her artifacts. For Farazan's artifact stats, a huge must-have is an ER Sans due to her energy requirements. If she's at a high constellation or if you're resigned to not bursting every rotation, then this can be negotiable with an attack Sans. But generally speaking, an ER Sans is the most recommended and comfortable route. Then you can go for an animal damage or attack goblet and a crit or attack circlet. For her substats, again, prioritize getting ER rolls, then attack and crit rolls will improve her damage. To burst every rotation, she needs upwards of 250% ER. This goes lower with another animal battery or when facing enemy mobs, and even more so if you plan to only use her burst every other rotation. Next are her artifact set options. It's very convenient to just use a 2-piece ER set plus a 2-piece attack set, animo damage set, noblesse for burst damage, or even another ER set as these can do the job. If you're looking to further enhance her support role, then you can use the following sets. The 4-piece noblesse set is a good, strong, boxable choice that lets her buff your team's attack to make her a better support. However, it can be redundant if someone else is holding it in the team already. The 4-piece Viridescent Venerer can still be really useful in teams with non-animo off-field DPS units, so that Farazan can shred their respective elements' resistance and boost their damage. A cheap but still good 4-star set is the Exile. It adds ER for her and it will regenerate flat energy for everyone except Farazan when she uses her burst. It will have a lower stat ceiling as a 4-star set though, but since you have room to insert a 5-star off piece, that can be an ER Sans instead to squeeze out more ER. The Emblem set is a potential option too. Its main benefit will be the 20% ER to address her energy requirements and at least it gives a buff to her burst damage. This last set is very conditional which is the 4-piece Tenacity. She can only use it if she is C6 already, since her kick can now constantly deal pressurized collapse which counts as skill damage. With it, she can buff both attack and shield strength which is helpful for those squishy animo DPSs. As for her weapons, her best options are pretty simple with good free-to-play choices as she mainly wants weapons that give ER. Starting off with my top recommendation is the Favonia Swarbo. It gives a lot of ER and generates particles which is really helpful for her and the team. It's accessible too since you get one copy for free. The more refinements, the better. For alternative free-to-play options, there's the Fading Twilight and End of the Line. Fading Twilight gives a higher base attack but lower ER and vice versa for the End of the Line. The Sacrificial Bow is also an ER option with the same base attack and ER stats as Fading Twilight, but the passive effect is unnecessary for her, so it's ultimately a stat stick. And if you have it, there's the premium 5-star Elegy for the End. It's got high base attack and ER stats and it can buff the team's attack and EM stats. If you want to increase her personal damage, you can give her more offensive weapons that give crit, attack, or damage bonuses. However, this should only be done if you are certain you can cover her energy needs without an ER weapon. 
Lastly, her teams are really, really simple. She's made to primarily support three Animo DPSs, Wanderer, Shao, and Heizo. That means only having two flex slots left to fill up in the team. Which you choose depends on what you need, a shielder, buffer, off-field DPS, etc. For a fuller discussion on team comp varieties, I advise you to check out the team section of my Wanderer guide, as many of the principles there can also apply to other Animo DPSs comped with Farazan. Could Farazan be used to primarily buff other animos like Venti or Kazaha who generally don't take a hyper carry role? Well, it's not recommended to comp her for the main purpose of buffing them. If ever, those other animos can be the third member of your Wanderer, Shao, or Heizo party, and so Farazan will incidentally benefit them too. Since Farazan looks like she'll be staying as the only exclusive animo support, then we'll have to see how future animo characters will want to be paired with her. And that's going to be it for this Farzan guide. I generally believe every Genshin character should have comfortable enough gameplay even without constellations. But in Farzan's case, her energy issues feel very prominent at C0, and she has incredibly significant functions locked behind her constellations. This is obviously not ideal in my eyes, but let me know what you think about Farzan in the comments. Still, I'm sure players will be able to appreciate her anyway for how she supports our animal carries and her very vibrant and vintage personality. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care! Huh. You're really putting a lot into this. Don't worry. It's my responsibility as your senior to guide and protect you. I won't let you go astray.